Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In front of me today are my 10 all-time favorite foundations. Well worth the money, I highly recommend them. They're just amazing. The 10 is a lot, you certainly don't need all of these, which is why I've separated them into three different categories. Skincare, long wear, and extra dewy. <laughs> They're all medium to full coverage foundation, so nothing here is light coverage, no tinted moisturizers. I'm going to save that for a separate video these would all be amazing for photos, date nights, special events, any occasion you can think of that calls for the full face. I'm going to begin with skincare. So if you're looking for a foundation that has anti-aging benefits, these would be great for you. Starting with the La Mer Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. This has SPF 20. It retails for $120. So the skincare category is a more expensive category, you get what you pay for, so their skincare, it's an elevated price point. I think they expanded the shade range. I was just looking and I think I counted 28 different shades, a lot of deeper shades, which was not previously available at least a year or so ago. So that's really great news. I wear shade 220 neutral, which looks like it is now just 22 neutral. It's a light shade with a neutral undertone. But what's so great about this foundation is that it is incredibly weightless on the skin and yet it gives great coverage. I feel like it just completely evens out my complexion and has more of a natural, maybe slightly luminous finish. I don't think it's overly luminous, overly hydrating, but you do get the antioxidants and the great stuff for your skin. All skin types can wear this foundation and it's probably the most natural choice on the entire list. I sometimes find myself saving it for special occasions so I don't use it as often as I really should. I'm going to move this to the top drawer so I can keep it top of mind and really get use out of it because it's gorgeous. And I think it's really nice for hotter months as well because it never feels heavy. The next skincare foundation is the brand new Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Soft Radiance Foundation with SPF 50. And I heard from a lot of people who didn't really care for this foundation or they just weren't overly impressed. And boy, I wished that was the case for me because at $150, this is a pricey foundation. I think I had a Nordstrom note, I did some returns, I knocked some dollars off so it wasn't quite as painful whenever I went to go check out. But it's beautiful. If I'm judging based solely on the look on the skin, I think it's absolutely exceptional. I just love the way this gives coverage, but it's kind of that soft, luminous matte. It looks like your skin. It's both fade resistant and moisturizing. It contains hyaluronic acid, a trio of natural oils, and anti-inflammatory fruit extracts. There are 40 shades available, which is pretty good for a Tom Ford foundation. I picked this up in 5.6 Ivory Beige. Usually I'm a six natural. I always like to get shade matched in a new Tom Ford foundation. I just don't think they correlate <laughs> between all of the different formulas. So this is a perfect match whenever I've sunless tanned. And like I said, I just love the coverage. I love the finish. I love the fact that it has SPF and skincare. I wish I didn't love this foundation as much as I do. I'm not sure I'm going to replace it simply because I do wanna go through some of my other foundations first. But if I do end up finishing the bottle, it'll be very tempting. When it does come time for me to replace any of my favorite skincare foundations, this will be my first purchase. This is the third foundation choice. It's Sublimage La Tint. This is from Chanel. This retails for $135. So it's kind of in the middle, I suppose, between the La Mer and the Tom Ford. It does come with a foundation brush, this little mini kabuki, great for travel. I have no idea where it is. The selling point to this foundation is not the brush, although it is convenient. I just love the way it looks. It is so beautiful on the skin, but I have this in shade 50 beige. It runs a little bit light, so it matches me whenever I've sunless tanned, but I'd like to pick this up in, I'd be tempted to get 30 beige, but I know that will probably be too light, so maybe a 40 beige. I just think it's a little bit too tan. I'm limited to when I can wear this foundation because I have to make sure that I'm really tan on my body. And I don't necessarily love to wear this 
in the dead of summer. I'd prefer to pick this up whenever it's spring, winter, it's maybe a little bit colder, a little bit drier, just less oppressive heat and humidity. This foundation is considered to have sheer to medium coverage, but I would say it's more medium to full. I think it does a beautiful job evening out your complexion. And at first it has more of a luminous matte, almost a natural finish. But then later on, you'll see that you get really dewy and your skin is just going to feel so hydrated and so nourished. This is one of the only foundations that whenever I wear it, when I wash my face at the end of the day, I swear my skin actually feels better than it did in the morning because it is just so hydrating. It does have the skincare from the entire Supermage skincare line. So the main active ingredient is stem cells from the vanilla plant, vanilla planifolia. And I really like the jar. It's weighted, it looks and feels so luxurious. Very Chanel. I have two extra dewy superstars here. I'm going to save my longwear warriors until the very end because that's a really strong pack. But let's start with these. The Guerlain L'Essential Foundation. This really fits into every single category. It checks all of the boxes. It could be considered a skincare foundation. It has 16 hour wear, so it's long wearing as well but it is just the most beautiful, luminous, glowy foundation. So if you prefer something very matte, this isn't going to be for you. It retails for $60. It contains 97% naturally derived ingredients, buildable coverage, natural glow finish. It says normal combination and oily skin types, but I don't believe it for a second. This is going to be best suited for anybody who's normal, maybe combination, definitely dry, not oily. I picked up the shade 03N. I love this bottle. It fits so nicely in the palm of your hand, but it was designed by a sculptor and it's meant to represent balance. So beautiful. Thought put into every single detail. It's something that I love about Guerlain, but this formula is incredible. This became one of my favorite foundations almost instantly as soon as this became available in the United States. because I think it was available in Europe for a long time before. There is a very light fragrance added, like most Guerlain products, but I know that can be a real turnoff for some people. This foundation just looks beautiful on the skin. When you're going out for an evening and you want your makeup to just look special, you know, you want to glow but not too much. You want coverage but just, I don't know, natural beauty to your skin. This is a great foundation. One of the best I've ever tried. The Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation gives the Guerlain a run for its money when it comes to luminosity. This retails for $52, so it's a little bit less expensive. I don't think it has nearly the same amount of skincare, but wow, your skin will be dewy <laughs> with this foundation. I picked this up in shade, let's see, 3N. Now this foundation runs a little bit dark, the last time I tried to wear this foundation, it oxidized so much, I was in shock. So I can only wear this when I have sunless tanned twice, maybe three times. I'll throw on that extra coat just to make sure it's a nice match. So you have to be careful when choosing a shade with this foundation, but it gives great coverage and it's very hydrating, which is sort of hard to find. There aren't that many great foundations that will give you coverage, but they'll be hydrating and luminous. It's just kind of a tricky combination because if it's really moisturizing but it's full coverage, sometimes it gets heavy on the skin. You have to be careful with this foundation. You don't want to apply too much, which is why I would recommend applying with a beauty blender or definitely a synthetic brush. The first foundation in this category is Dior Air Flash. My one true love. <laughs> I love this foundation. I rant and rave about it, so I'm going to spare you <laughs> going through all of the details and just singing my love song to this foundation. But uh, the honest truth, if I could only choose one foundation to wear for the rest of my life, I would choose Air Flash. I don't think that's extreme. I just think this is the best foundation for me. It says it's water resistant, 12 hour wear. So it's not the longest wearing foundation. I really wasn't quite sure what category to even put this in because it's just so beautiful on the skin and it is long wearing. I mean, I've never been in a situation where 12 hours wasn't long enough. You know, I needed the full 24 hours. I never wear makeup on my face for longer than 12 hours. So the 12 hours is perfect. 
I wore this foundation on my wedding day. That's how much I believe in it. Recyclable packaging. I have the shade 311 here, but this is old. You know, I'm really not sure. I was told they weren't reformulating, but that some people suspected that they did reformulate. They definitely changed the color, so I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. I don't wanna commit to anything and give you wrong information. But I believe my shade now would be 3.5N or 3W. There's no skincare, there's no sunscreen. It's beautiful for photos. It's described as full coverage and radiant. I don't think it's that radiant, I think it's Maybe a natural finish. It's not overly matte, but it's not nearly as dewy as some of these really dewy foundations. And I wouldn't even say it's full coverage, but that's what's so great about it, is that it does have coverage, but you can build it up. The way I like to apply this is I will spray directly on my brush, and then I kind of dab in the center points of my face and blend out. All nitpicking and details aside, this is the one foundation that just looks the best. When we get back to basics and kind of simplify, what are we really looking for in a foundation? We just want it to look nice on our skin. That's what this is. Because it's so thin, it's very forgiving on your face. I never feel like I'm wearing a mask. It never feels heavy. It's just so versatile. It works in every occasion. On days that I want light coverage, I can use Air Flash. If I want a little bit more coverage, Air Flash. Photos, Air Flash. Special occasion, Air Flash. You get the picture. The Christmas party that we went to for my husband's work, I grabbed Air Flash. It's just that go-to foundation that when I don't even want to think about it, I just want to go autopilot and just know that my makeup is going to look nice and last a long time. This is the one that I choose. Everybody's skin is different. It's not going to work for everybody. There may be people out there that don't love it as much as I do. I imagine if you're out there, you can find something else on this list, but that's just what works for me. The next foundation I have here is the Givenchy Tank Couture Everwear Foundation. I was obsessed with this formula when I first tried it. I thought it was amazing, but it's kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit. I haven't picked this up in a very long time. I will keep it close moving forward. So this has 24 hour wear, a full day, <laughs> satin finish, full coverage and comfort. That satin finish, I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean, but it's very velvety matte. Probably the most matte formula that I've talked about so far. I have a couple other matte formulas. In fact, they're all matte here on out. No more dew, the dew has dried up. It's still very beautiful. This is probably one of the softest mattes. Actually, yeah, this is a nice transition. I'm gonna say this runs about $52 in that area. It has SPF 20 and I have the shade Y300. I remember guessing and having no clue what shade I was going to be and then I kind of lucked out. Uh, it does have a little bit more of a yellow gold undertone for me. Whenever I've tanned, it kind of works out, but this one is tricky. I see this in Sephora now though, so you can probably go to your local Sephora when they open and maybe find a nice color match. If you're looking for a soft matte foundation with great coverage, the Givenchy Tint Couture Everywhere is the foundation to answer your prayers. It never looks or feels heavy, but it is super full coverage. I guess you can always sheer out a full coverage foundation. I would rather sheer out a full coverage foundation than try to build up a really light coverage foundation, you know, because then you're going in with layers and layers of product. But really, this is going to be for photos, special occasions, if you have oily skin, if you have hyperpigmentation, melasma, post blemish marks, anything that you really need to cover. So it's not going to be for everyone, but it serves a specific purpose. And I wasn't gonna look this up, but I'm glad I did because I thought this was interesting. It says, built to resist intense days physical activities, and varying weather conditions. It's also waterproof and lasts for up to 24 hours. So you could probably take this swimming on a first date and your foundation would be whoosh, completely perfect the entire time. Next up is the Ultra Latin Foundation from Chanel. This is the Ultra Wear All Day Comfort Flawless Finish Foundation. I have the shade B30. Great foundation for photos, great foundation for brides because there's no SPF and it is matte, but it is a slightly soft matte. It has medium to full coverage, no skincare, but no complaints either. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you like coverage and you want something that's gonna last all day, especially if you're looking at Chanel, 
the Ultralit Tint is going to be your go-to option. And it's just a really pretty foundation kind of across the board. I haven't heard a lot of complaints about this formula. It's not polarizing. Like some of the others here, for example, the Tom Ford Foundation. I heard from people who loved it. Some people weren't impressed. They didn't like it. That's not really the case with Ultra La Tint. You kind of know what you're looking for if you grab this foundation. And it's nice. It's really pretty. It, it holds its own on this list. And I think that's really saying something considering how much skincare and amazing ingredients and amazing formulas are here. You can't really go wrong with it. Next, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. I picked this up in the shade 6 Neutral, and at just $44, I think this is a steal. It's got to be the least expensive foundation on the list. This is my go-to foundation whenever I want to just smooth my complexion. I want really full coverage, and it doesn't budge. This acts the most like a true long wear foundation. It dries down quickly, so you have to be careful whenever you're applying. You kind of want to work in sections on the face, or if you are going to dab, you just want to be really stealthy with it because if you just kind of like dee dee dee, take your time, it's going to become too hard to blend and manipulate on the skin. The good news is that once it does dry down, it's not going to budge. It's not going anywhere. It truly lasts all day long with no signs of cracking, flaking. It just looks really nice later on in the day, which is why I love this foundation so much. Now, according to the description, it's for all skin types and it's hydrating and it has anti-aging skincare. That may be the case. I would not recommend this for mature skin. It is not hydrating whatsoever in my experience. I think it's going to be great for anybody with oily skin, if you have combination skin, normal skin. If you're dry, yes, you can take certain prep steps to make sure that it doesn't look awful, but it just wouldn't be my first recommendation for you. There are better foundations if you are dry because it is so matte, very, very matte. Not a luminous matte, it is a full-blown matte foundation. And as much as it says their skincare, because of the nature of this foundation being long wear, the fact that it dries down so quickly, I just think you have to be so careful. If you have a ton of fine lines and wrinkles on your face, this isn't going to be really forgiving. It's not going to be the best formula for you. According to Charlotte, this is a hybrid skincare foundation. It's meant to be lightweight, sweat-proof, humidity-proof, waterproof, and transfer resistant. Now, all of those things I would agree with. It does go on pretty light. I never feel like it's really heavy. Transfer resistant, definitely. Sweat proof, kind of budge proof, water resistant. I would say all of those things are definitely true. So if you're going to be maybe at an outdoor wedding, outdoor event, some sort of situation where you might be sweating or exposed to the elements, this is probably the best formula for you on the entire list. Last but certainly not least, I have the YSL All Hours Foundation. This is an old favorite that I've recently revisited. I'd gone through an entire bottle several years ago now, and then I was doing my YSL Favorites video and it was just perfect timing. I knew I had to pick it up again because I love this foundation. It's one of my favorite things from YSL. And now I've been reintroduced and I remember why I loved it so much back then. So this has up to 24 hour wear the full day, Flawless matte finish, full coverage, it's oil-free, it has SPF 20. I picked this up in B50, honey. It runs a little bit light, so that might seem sort of dark. And again, this is a shade that matches me when I've sunless tanned. I think this is a great foundation for those people who like full coverage on a daily basis. You could always mix in a beauty oil or a liquid illuminator if you wanted to enhance the glow factor but it is oil-free, so if you're oily combination, this foundation will be great for you. It's incredibly perfecting. It never feels heavy. Even though there is SPF 20, I would still recommend this for brides or any situation where you're taking photos. I've never experienced any flashback and it just looks so nice. You're gonna feel your absolute best whenever you're wearing this foundation. It's beautiful for full coverage. And that completes today's video on my 10 all-time favorite foundations. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found this information helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, your questions down below. I want to hear from you guys. What are your 
all-time favorite foundations? Drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned, everything today on my face, down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.